Are you ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to episode 12 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm Ren. And I'm River. And today, or this week, <laughs> we are continuing our topic on herbs. Yes, we're, we're going to give you sage advice. <laughs> okay, Ren's not laughing. <laughs> Your jokes are funny. I'm just used can, to your jokes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm this way all the time, guys. So, you know, she's old. She's over it. I'm not over it. I think it's funny that you think it's funny. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's funny. Okay. But first, before we get into it, what are you drinking? So it's been a really shitty day at work. It's been a shitty week at work. And I haven't had time to drink anything because I been too tired and too much crap to do so I am drinking my rosé wine because it's the easiest thing to do and I don't have the patience to make a, a snazzy drink today so I'm drinking my rosé wine the bubbling stuff and I'm drinking it out of a pewter glass it's not a glass a pewter goblet Mm -hmm. that I got from the Renaissance Festival one year and it's oh. got Celtic etchings all down the side and it fit my mood. Oh, sweet. So yeah, I, I'm that, that just fits my mood. What are you drinking? I, again, I'm not fun because I think I'm taking a break from alcohol. <laughs> I know why. <laughs> yeah. So I'm drinking, I'm drinking a Pepsi. But I'm taking a break from alcohol because I drank too much when I went out with my husband and friends and just wasn't feeling it. And I honestly, I've been having some stomach problems. So like food wise, I haven't been able to eat like normal foods without my stomach having a problem with it. So I've just been kind of taking things out of my daily yeah. to figure out what it is so i'm just experimenting with my food right now so i'm just I'm yeah having alcohol a, would screw that up yeah yeah i'm doing a, a zero sugar pepsi today yeah i'm trying to lay off some alcohol too because i just started a diet it's called the keto diet i'm i don't know if you've heard of it or not but mm -hmm. it's where you try to cut out carbs or you, you don't cut them out you just eat a few of them Mm -hmm. And alcohol, although it doesn't take you out of ketosis, it does mess up the burning of the fat, which is what this keto diet is supposed to do. Yeah. And I think I've got the keto flu, which is a real thing, apparently. Mm -hmm. That's another reason why this week is shitty. And, uh, but I, I needed a drink today. So, yeah, I'm having a drink, but it's not a fun, snazzy thing because I don't have the patience. My, my patience right now is smaller than the width of a candle. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. We've all been there. We've all been yeah. there. It's just one of those weeks. Yep. Yep. And also last, last Sunday, Monday, last Sunday. Sunday, Friday, I think. Saturday. <laughs> I always thought Letha was on the 21st, no matter what. But this year, everything on the internet said it was on the 20th, which was Sunday. Sunday. So we celebrated Letha. Mm -hmm. And we celebrated together. And oh, yeah, we, we are not together in the same house yeah. building this time. And we'll see how the audio is because we always have trouble with the audio. <laughs> yeah. When we're apart, we can't use the program that I know how to use. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I, with all the stuff going on and I can't <laughs> figure it out right now so yeah. we're using zoom, zoom which is not the greatest but we do both have our headphones on so hopefully this this works hopefully this is gonna but, get a new he uh, set of headphones so that yes just specifically for this so let's see <laughs> yeah, I mean to uh, me you sound great so hopefully our people will let us know if if yes. it's not good so that we can change. Yes. Yell at us on whatever social media or email us and yell at us. Your audio's crap. So we can figure out what, uh, what well, to do with it. <laughs> this week that might make me cry. So just say oh, you might oh. want to change the way you record. Yes. Be sensitive, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I'm fine, but this, this week just sucks, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. But we had a good weekend where we did. I made lemonade. Yes. And it was very lovely. 
I did not add alcohol to mine. <laughs> and you know me, I always do. That was Father's Day. So that's the last time I drank alcohol before yeah. this darn keto thing. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I had alcohol. <laughs> Woo! Woo! And we also made a, well, I say we, but I mean River and I decorated it. I just put like you the did. pizzazz on it of a, a cheesecake. Yes, it was a lemon cheesecake because that was kind of our, our theme. So mm-hmm. it did have lemon in it. Um, but she has the talent for the decorating stuff. So she decorated it with raspberries and strawberries and it was beautiful and we it, ate it and it was yummy. It was very delicious. It Even was. for a cheesecake. I'm not a cheesecake fan. I'm more of like the cake fan, like, you know, mm-hmm. but it was very delicious. I love cheesecake. Mm-hmm. Mm. So yeah. we're going to move on to our actual topic since mm-hmm. we have uh, already been talking for who knows how long and <laughs> haven't even gotten there yet. Oh. Um, and a lot of my information comes from my favorite witch book that I always talk about. It's mm-hmm. by Anju Kiernan. It's the ultimate guide to witchcraft and it's mm-hmm. on Amazon. You can go and buy it. I mm-hmm. highly recommend it. And what, what are, where did your uh, where did your recipes come from? That is not what I was supposed to say. Where did your information come from? Uh, mine comes from the it's a book, uh, Herbal Magic: A Witch's Guide to Herbal Enchantments. Enchantments. Mm-hmm. Fol- fol- I'm just butchering. Wow. Folklore and divination by Jirna Dunwick. Um, okay. Which and in underneath her name on the book it says author of exploring spellcraft, which is really cool and it's free online. It's a PDF. Oh, and so you guys can go and access it. We will have it linked below along with everything that we use. Um, but I would check it out because it's a really cool read. Very nice. I'll have mm-hmm. to look at that. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Well, I'll jump right in with um, the beginning. And, you know, we had talked before about how to harvest herbs and dry them and that kind of thing. And we also mm-hmm. talked about a few herbs to begin with. Now I'm going to talk about making magic with your herbs. Mm-hmm. And you should work with the moon phases. The fuller waxy moon is good for preparing and decanting so that the plant's energies are pulled into the liquids. Um You can also use the ruling planet of the herb, which if you remember our very first episode on herbs, uh, Ren got into that. She told us all about Mm -hmm. the different um, ruling planet planets of the herb. So you need to take that into account too with the moon phases um, to get that intended effect out of your herb. And then you need to prepare your workspace so you can smudge it. You can clean it with herbal sprays, use your besom to sweep it off. Um, clear out all those negative energies that might taint your spell because that, that you don't want to have your spell manifest in an unintended way. Mm-hmm. Um, clean your uh, tools as well, um, not just the workspace, but the actual tools that you're going to be using. You want to, to cleanse it, them from negative energy. And you can even run uh, your tools under running water as a good way to cleanse it that Running water is a great way to just clear negative energies. Yeah. And some of the tools that you might consider using would be a mortar and a pestle, a grinder, your athame, although to some people that is a no-no. You don't use your athame for actual um, chopping and that kind of thing, which is Mm -hmm. what we're talking about here because of herbs. Some people have their own actual herbal blade. Yeah. Um, but some people do use their athame. Some kitchen witches, the athame is their sacred blade and um, working with herbs is sacred to them because that is the focus of their magic. Mm-hmm. Um, a glass funnel, glass pipettes, cheesecloths, uh, droppers, medicine droppers. So all of those could be the tools that you might use in making your magic. Some of the things that you can make magic with the herbs are sachets or sachets or I don't know how people pronounce it I I took French so to me it's sachet um it's a cotton silk or natural fiber bag that contains herbs put together with a specific intention you enchant this in a ritual space and it can be worn on the body or it can be placed in a special spot or you can put it under your pillow. It just depends on what your intended use is for this, but it's a great way to contain 
your spell ingredients uh, without them getting all over everything. It, it's a, and it's beautiful. I've seen a lot of sachets that are just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it can also be called a charm bag or a mojo bag. Okay. You can make tinctures or elixirs. And with that, you uh, place the prepared herb into a glass jar and you cover it with vodka or brandy. They're usually actually made with brandy um, and you cut it in half with raw honey. Oh. And then if the uh, herbs are powdered, you fill alcohol, the alcohol about two fingers above the powder and you place it in a cool, dark place for about four to six weeks. And you need to shake the jar or roll the jar gently <clears throat> one time a day, chanting your intentions as you do. So you're, you're instilling your intentions into that elixir or tincture. And during the waxing moon, you can decant the liquid through the cheesecloth into clean jars for storage. Okay. Yeah. And then um, an infusion, which is basically like making tea. And I'll actually go into teas later because that is one of my favorite ways to use my herbs Mm -hmm. but an infusion is where you take the leaves the flowers and the stamens which are the pollen stems of a plant that are delicate and would be destroyed if you boil it directly in water and you um put them you preserve to preserve the benefits of the plant you add the plants to a mug or a jar and boil the water and pour it over the plants Instead of boiling the plants in the water because they would disintegrate and fall apart. Yeah. Um, You cover it with uh, the lid or a small plate if you don't have a lid and you leave the plants to infuse for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then um, they can also be left to infuse overnight to create an even stronger, although a lot more bitter if it's something you're going to eat or drink, um, Mm -hmm. potion. And then you strain the plants and drink just like you would a tea. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> then there's decoctions, which use about one quarter ounce of dry herb per cup of water. And you add bark, roots, or stems of the plants to a saucepan of cold water, and then bring it to a boil and you simmer it for 15 to 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And if you're lo- using the larger pieces of bark or roots, then you can boil it for closer to an hour. And then you take it off the stove and you let it sit for about 20 more minutes covered and keep it covered. And you strain the potion and you use only the liquid. That liquid Mm -hmm. is is super strong. You can make honeys, which is a great way, which I think whenever we do our cookbook for um, uh, alcoholic beverages, whatever, our our cocktail book, that's, I think a lot of our recipes may use honey as the sweetener. Because mm-hmm. you can do a lot of magical things with the honeys. Yeah. But you take one cup of honey per two tablespoons of your chopped fresh herbs. I mean, you can use dried herbs. <coughs> so if you've dried your herbs, you use one tablespoon of dried herbs. Mm-hmm. And you pour the honey into a double boiler. Um, and then you fill with water. Mm-hmm. And you ban- um the, the goal is you, if you don't have a double boiler, you can actually do it another way. You can do it one pot inside of another. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the purpose is, is that you want the smaller pot or whatever, the double, double boiler to be submerged in water, not touching the very hot bottom of the pot, which would then damage your <coughs> uh, flavors. It might burn or singe the flavors. Mm-hmm. You put the burner to medium to low heat, and once your honey is warm, you add your herbs and you stir to distribute. You let your honey sit for one to six hours, and the longer it sits, the stronger it will be, and you want it uh, to stay warm that enough that you can comfortably put it on your skin because it's great for your skin as well. Yeah, I personally like it in my cocktails, So, <laughs> <laughs> but when it's done, it tastes wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got a lot of this information out of culinarywitch.com, okay. which we'll, we'll post um, as yeah. well. Yeah. And then my favorite thing is the teas. And I got this from Astra Geerling, Geerligs on uh, fairytaleslavery.com. It's her blog. Okay. And <laughs> she says tea is made up of five elements. Earth, which is the combination of leaves, roots, fruits, seeds, and flowers. 
water, which is the medium, the canvas carrying the properties and the essence of your tea. Air, the steam and frag- fragrances that arise out of your tea, which, mm-hmm. you know, you can use the steam that comes off your tea as similar to you use incense, the way you use incense. Yeah. So if you need incense in a spell and you don't have any, you can make a tea and use the steam and the the essence that comes off that water um, from in the air as um, incense. Mm -hmm. Fire is the warmth of the tea and spirit is the ritual of combining the four other elements and drinking your tea. Okay. So basically, you know, an herb is right for your tea. If you found a meaning that makes sense to you, you can go on the internet and, you know, they'll say mint means this and this means this. And when you find something that just clicks with you, that's when you know, okay, I found the right one. So (laughs) it's uh, the best way I think to start making a witch's brew or a tea is by working with that magic number three. Mm -hmm. And the Astro Gear Legs says um, you choose one main herb and two supporting herbs. I mean, she says every witch is going to have their own way of formulating and preparing their teas. So do whatever, you know, is, works for you because it's your magic. Mm-hmm. But here's how she does it. <laughs> Step one, you need to figure out what is your purpose. Set your intention. Mm-hmm. Number two, select your main herb. The herb that you choose is going to be the the strongest representation of the main purpose behind your blend. I'm sorry, you guys. My throat is scratching and talking all day at work. Hmm. Mm. Take a sip of wine. (laughs) Then you choose your supporting herbs, Mm -hmm. which are going to enhance the main herb. And... You know, it could be supportive in the way that they taste. It could be supportive in the coloring that they're going to make your tea, um, the color associations that you want to see, um, their fragrances. Like right now, I like to just have a black mm, viscous tea right now because that's my mood. <sighs> their frag- fragrances, their traditional uses and the parts, whether you're going to use the leaves, the roots, the flowers, the fruit, the seeds or the bark. Mm-hmm. So she says, this is a potion that she uses, a tea that she makes for courage. Okay. Yeah. So she chose to work with peppermint as her main herb. Peppermint is a good remedy for easing digestive issues caused by anxieties. It, uh, the digestive system is linked with the solar plexus, which, as we know, we talked about the chakras, mm-hmm. um, which is also considered the seat of your personal power. Peppermint strengthens the solar plexus, which governs confidence and the ability to tune into inner knowledge, you know, your that gut feeling. Yeah. <laughs> and then she used as her minor herbs, ginger and Earl Grey. Ginger has grounding powers that strengthens the solar plexus and its spiciness invigorates and stimulates action. And then she used uh, bergamot or bergamot, mm-hmm. it's, which is a citrus oil that promotes a, a bright and un, uplifting mood, which is commonly, this This is the herb that's a lot of times in the Earl Grey tea. Huh. So she used those together, and together those, she said, are a powerhouse of assertiveness and optimism. Oh. And then she said, the next thing you do is you hand write out your recipe, make up a name for your blend, spell out your intention, Write an incantation. You don't have to, but I think that strength to me and my magic that strengthens it. The in, the incantation. Keep mm-hmm. it simple, <laughs> but choose words that evoke feeling, hold power, and inspire your imagination. While you blend your herbs, speak out your incantation. Speak it each time with more power, and I would say to speak it three times, given mm-hmm. that the power of three. Yeah. Um, then make your voice softer and softer until it's quiet and internalized. When you make and drink your tea, meditate on these words. If you're in a safe, private place, feel free to even sing out these words and pra- practice this realistically. So that was fascinating. And then I've also got a list of other types of potions. So you've got a filter, which is water based, delicate ingredients, the mm-hmm. infusion. I think I said infusion already. 
um, decoction, I think I said that, syrup, which is where you take the ingredients and you add sugar to them, mm-hmm. a poultice, which is something that you chop up the plant material and it's placed outside your body. Like, you know, we've all heard of poultices. Like if you get a bee sting, you might put a poultice on the bee sting to dry out the poison. Um, <coughs> a salve, which a salve is how I pronounce it. I am Southern. Um, it's an oil or fat based thick and creamy solution, which is used for external application. Um, a macerate, which I'm not quite sure what that is. It says it's cold water-based plant infusion requiring up to 12 hours. And then inhalation, of course, you can take those vapors like I was talking about from the tea. Mm -hmm. You can um, inhale those for effects as well. Yeah. (laughs) So those are great ways to use your herbs in magic. Yes. I have a neat little link, which I guess Ren will put in the um, information area when we post it. Yes. It's, It's a cool link. And it tells you it's a quiz. You know, I love those online quiz things. And it tells you what type of herb you are. Oh, my. I thought I thought that was hilarious. And it says that I am turmeric and peppermint. So apparently, everyone feels brighter around me. Probably not this week. Uh, you know how to settle down in any difficult or inflammatory situation with your vibrant and fun-loving personality. Your enthusiasm is unique. I I would say that's a very true statement. (laughs) (laughs) And some don't understand how you stay so bright. You do well in warm and welcoming places where your bright energy is welcomed and celebrated. So I would love you all to go take this quiz and tell us what type of herbs you guys are. I'm going to have to go take the quiz and see what type of herb I am. Definitely. And she'll post the link, but I'll say it out loud. It's www.traditionalmedicinals.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't really go like deep into uh, information, like making magic with herbs. I kind of went on kind of what we did last time, like the last two times we talked about Uh herbs, where now I, I kind of dove into herbal superstitions. That is so cool. I'm so excited to hear this. I only picked four because it was actually really hard to pick which ones I wanted to talk about. It was an adventure. Is this this the one? Is this the stuff that's from that free book you said? Yes. Yes. Very cool. Okay. So herbal superstitions. I'm going to start. I'm going to go alphabetically. Okay. So I started with acorn. (laughs) Love acorns. I've never heard of acorn being used in this way, so it was really fun. Okay. So it is believed that an acorn, when you place it on your windowsill, it'll guard your house against fires and damage caused by lightning strikes. Oh, how interesting. I have never heard that. I know. And this superstition, and I love Norse mythology, it can be tracked back to old Norse legend that the great god Thor was once sheltered from the thunderstorm under a mighty oak tree. Oh, how neat. Isn't it? I love that story. I love it so much. That one was short and sweet. (laughs) Yeah, I like that. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. So next I have broom. So the broom has a lot like long been like regarded as the plant of ill omen and the unluckiest and it's unluckiest during the month of May Hmm. to sweep the house with blossom broom in May or even to bring it into the house is said to sweep the head of the house away. What does that mean? Sweep the head. What is the head of the house, like the roof or the master of the house? Like back Maybe in the day, it was the man or both, both get rid of that man. In England, it was once believed that the whipping of a young boy also could be associated to that saying, like sweep the head of the house away. Like, oh, and then um, the whipping of the young boy goes with like a green broom, which resulted in the stunning of his growth. 
maybe the stunting of his mental growth for sure. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that one was a little, I, but it's cool because you, you always think, oh, a witch's broom and you never think of it yeah. like this and like yeah. herbal su- superstitch. Stu- I'm only drinking Pepsi. <laughs> herbal superstitions you're em- empathic to my pain today <laughs> <laughs> so next is daffodil if the very first daffodil you lay eyes upon in the spring or summer hangs its head towards you this is said to be an omen of bad luck for the remind the remainder of the year well that kind of sucks because daffodils bloom in like february so I you're know. screwed for the whole I rest know. of the year but it's only if it looks towards you, like if it's like. And it hangs its head. head. Yeah. Okay. This herbal superstition, which is centuries old, continues to live in many parts of Great Britain. You know, I love the daffodil. It is the first flower that my husband ever gave me when we were dating. Aw. He, he actually stopped. We were poor back then. And he uh, we were in college when we met. And he stopped on the side of the road before it was like early on, like maybe our second date mm-hmm. and picked me a bunch of, of daffodils off the side of the road. And to this day, I love daffodils. Aww. Mm-hmm. Does your husband remember that? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, the next one, I think you're going to like, cause it's garlic. <laughs> I'm covering garlic. garlic. <laughs> yep. So the legendary power of garlic to keep bloodthirsty vampires and all evil spirits at bay is known throughout much of the world. However, some say that the only garlic gathered in the month of May can truly What's up with be the month effective of May? for this purpose. I'm not sure. Why is May so May, dangerous? May is the month where like you start to see the growth in all your plants and everything from the winter and spring, like, like actual gardening season. So maybe it has something to do with that. I mean, I can see why garlic would be especially powerful then. Cause like you said, it's when it's bursting to life and it's at its peak, but that one with this whipping of the boy or the (laughs) the broom from the month of May being a bad thing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, According to an old legend popular among Christians, the first garlic sprang up in the spot where the devil's left foot stepped when he left the garden of Eden. Well, they shouldn't want to eat garlic at all then. Right. And Uh. in the spot, uh, where his right foot step sprang the first onion. Oh my God. I love onions too. I guess uh-huh. I'm, a, I'm which, evil, I guess. Which is funny because I'm allergic to both of them. <laughs> it's so funny because like, I, I can't like, it's not like I'm allergic, like, uh, like I'll die from them anaphylactic kind of. Yeah. It's like more of like, I'm a sen- I'm sensitive to the garlic because I was talking to my youngest sister and I was like, yeah, I just hate the aftertaste of garlic and onions. And she was like, what are you talking about? So she doesn't feel it. And I looked it up and it's like a sensitivity and people who are more sensitive to that type of, um, I guess, plant or herb are like allergic. Like it leaves like well, an after. I get mean when I eat raw onions. Oh, my, my husband knows not to let me have raw onions. Oh. Well, or if he does, he's like, okay, I'm going to go fishing. Yeah, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to head out. <laughs> so garlic is said to be able to absorb the diseases of both men and beasts, as well as to trap and destroy negative vibrations and evil, excuse me, evil influences within cursed and haunted dwellings. So no. interestingly, onions are credited with having the same powers. That is bizarre. I love that story. I didn't yeah. know any of that. The devil's left and right. Yeah. But that is the coolest thing. Yeah. <laughs> Garlic is my favorite food herb. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely love it. And I guess I must not be a vampire. Although who knows if I've ever had garlic eaten, I mean, grown in May. That's pretty specific. I mean, probably garlic is mass produced. So there's probably a chance. <laughs> you would think, but I, I love the very rare meat. Everybody makes fun of me and my family because mm-hmm. my 
my steaks that I like or any, any red meat, my mouth is watering. Um, <laughs> I'll drink the blood off the plate. The other day I, I got caught, um, a person down the street was over and uh, they were outside and they came in and I was drinking the blood off the plate of a steak I had cooked. <laughs> Yeah, you weirdo. <laughs> and she looked at me and she's like, oh, okay. And I was <laughs> like, I didn't know what to say. But um, I what I wanted to talk more a little bit about the how to work the spells mm-hmm. with the um, herbs. Yeah. And spells generally have two distinct phases. I mean, generally, I say there are many different ways to cast spells. And some take days or months or years to even manifest and and work but generally there's two faces Mm -hmm. um and y'all might not might not agree with me and i'd love to hear how what you all think about this too um the first one is concentrating on gathering power and then the second one is releasing it with focused intent in a particular direction to me that boils down the essence of casting a spell Mm -hmm. i read about this uh spell called the nine herbs charm it's from ancient England. And it calls for the assemblage of herbs, which if you notice, nine is also got three in it. It's mm-hmm. three threes. Yep. But it you assemble chamomile, mugwort, lamb's crest, plantain, mayweed, nettle, crab apple, thyme, and fennel. And these are crushed and mixed into a salve. Mm-hmm. And the charm is sung three times. There's that that three again. Yeah, that three. Over each ingredient, um, and again, over the patient, it's, this was used for healing purposes back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so in monasteries and things, they would make make this. And it was then chanted again over the patient as the salve was applied to the patient. And if properly executed, the nine herbs charm protects the patient from illnesses believed to come from toxins in the air. Okay. Which Back then, they had little understanding of what caused certain things. But yeah. for some reason, this these herbs, when applied as a salve, healed people. Mm-hmm. And I guess if it didn't, then they just said that it wasn't executed properly. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily necessary to uh, speak those specific words. It's whatever words. Uh, to me, spell work is intent. Yeah, And so to, however you personally need to get your intent across is fine. Some people want to sing. Some people do rhymes. Some people, you know, it, it, your magic is your own. Yes. I think the important part of spellcasting is your intention and your focus, which is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that reminds me actually of the, you remember the Charmed episode where Phoebe was in class. She had gone back to college and these three girls behind her, I don't know if you remember this or not. They were sitting there reading from this book and they're like, oh, this is a spell for making the perfect man. And (laughs) they were reading it out and Phoebe's like, oh, that will never work. That's not the way it needs to be done. She's like, you need to say it like this. And she says the spell, well, one of the girls had her tape recorder going. (sighs) And so that night they went home to make the perfect man And they played Phoebe's voice. And of course it turned these animals into men, which led to a whole bunch of debacle. But, you know, it was funny to me that she thought, and some other people may think this too, that it was important, the words you used. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, the reason I don't think the actual words used is as important as your intent is because if you're using someone else's words, those aren't, those don't have necessary necessarily have meaning to you yeah and you might not feel that power it's more important for you to feel your power however you need to get that across yeah I could see that I think what the charmed series was going for is that like magic and witchcraft were only for certain people and only certain people could practice it so I feel like her voice over the tape recorder she was like an actual witch yeah so that's and why that happened. Yeah. yeah, but we think that anybody could be one if you have that intent, if you have that uh 
what's the word I'm going for? Like I mean, focus. focus. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> We just, we just said focus. With, oh, <laughs> that focus. Oh, you're turning more and more like me. Isn't that oh, great? Oh my gosh. <laughs> when do the, when do the bad jokes start? <laughs> I'm waiting. I am waiting. I can just see us walking down the street, arms around each other, just laughing so hard. We're stumbling and people would think we're drunk and we're just laughing at our we're own just jokes. laughing at our own jokes. <laughs> Um, so now I'm going to hop into divination and I only picked two. And of course this whole, this it's again from the book, everything that I'm going to say is from the book. Okay. I really recommend going to read it. Cause it was really like a really good read. I only picked two, uh, one I've been into the acorns, <laughs> so, acorn divination. Didn't you have an acorn break your phone? I actually did. I had, and my dad to this day doesn't believe me. <laughs> I was walking, I, I was in college, I was walking on campus, and some jerk, some jerk went speeding in the parking lot over a bump, right? And I'm walking like in the parking lot, I'm almost onto the sidewalk. I'm almost to my building. This asshole comes speeding by on his car <laughs> in his car, and it's by a tree that drops these huge acorns, like maybe the size of a bottle cap, right? <laughs> and I felt something hit my hand, and I had my phone screen facing out from my body, or like maybe it was like in my hand a certain way where it hit the middle top part of my screen and it cracked all the way down my phone. And I didn't realize it until I'd gotten inside and I looked at my phone and I went, that's not my phone, you know, cause my phone wasn't cracked at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I panicked and I called my dad and I go, this just happened to me. I'm crying. Cause of course, like at the time, like he was paying for my phone. It's a whole <laughs> thing. And he goes, you just dropped it and you don't want to say that you dropped it. And I was like, no, an acorn hit my phone. Obviously he wouldn't believe me. Like he's a rational human being, <laughs> but to this day, he still doesn't believe me. And so that I guess, hilarious. I guess I've been drawn to acorns while I was reading this book. <laughs> well, at least, you know, your phone didn't catch on fire. You know, you said acorns prevent house fires and damaged by lightning so you didn't get struck by lightning that's very true it just cracked and damaged my phone <laughs> <laughs> so acorn divination if you desire to know what fate has in store for you and your fiance or boyfriend but specifically fiance perform the following divination on a night of the full moon so take two acorns and mark your initials upon one and your significant other's initials upon the other. Then place the acorn three inches apart from each other in a cauldron filled with water. And that's where I, my question is, do acorns float? I have no idea. I don't know. And then carefully observe their movement. So I guess that does mean like... They must they, float. They float, but doing the three inches thing, I'm very... Oh, three inches again. Just the number <gasps> three, three. The number three. But again, my I'm a perfectionist. If it says three inches, I'm going to make it three inches apart. Yeah, like, <laughs> you're, a, you're a scientist. Yeah. yeah. So if they drift towards each other, then it is a sure sign that a wedding is in the offering. And however, if they drift away from each other, this indicates that you and your partner, fiance, shall part um, part before your wedding bells ring. Like Wow. Not so. Yeah, you'll go your separate ways. Yeah. And if the acorn remains stationary, repeat the divination again or like try again later, like at a later time. That like, also reminds me of Charmed. I guess I'm on a Charmed kick right now. Yeah. Where, you're talking about it makes me want to watch it. <laughs> I know. Me too. Remember when they go back in time to learn the roots of witchcraft, they, they go back in time yes. and cold goats back too. And yeah, you, you have to peel the apple peel and put it in the water. And whatever initial it forms is supposed to be the initial of the, of the name yeah. of your true love. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me think of that. It didn't make me think of that, but I guess it makes me think of that now because it was in a cauldron in the water. and Well, and it's not an acorn. It just but it was, it was, yeah. still made me think about it. I don't yeah. Know why. I'm weird. Okay. <laughs> so rose dream divination. 
<laughs> so perform the following divination on Midsummer's Eve, which we kind of missed. So yeah, you just you have to wait till next year. Give give it give it <laughs> another year. Yeah, <laughs> when the clock chimes twelve, and it doesn't say if a.m. or p.m. Okay, it just says twelve. Well. well Midsummer's Eve, so maybe midnight. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, to usher in the witching hour, so maybe midnight. Oh, uh, yeah, because the witching yeah. hour is around three. So, which three, but I feel like it could be at any point mm-hmm. in time. Okay, anyways, without uttering a single word, walk backwards into a garden and gather, gather the reddest rose in full bloom. Wrap it in a clean sheet of white paper and then tuck it away in some secret hiding place where it will be undisturbed. At sunrise on the day of the old winter solstice, uh, which is December 25th. Because the new winter solstice is the 21st. Yes, this one is the 25th, old okay. winter solstice on the December 25th. Hmm. Remove the, ro- the rose from the paper and place the flower on your bosom (laughs) that's just such a weird word to me bosom (laughs) according to legend the man who is destined to become your husband will then come and snatch it away oh interesting Mm -hmm. well you know first of all they're assuming i can walk backwards to be able to get into the garden to pick the rose to begin with yeah well i have my husband so i don't have to worry (laughs) about it Oh, Lord. So I also, you know, how in our first, was it our first episode on herbs, we talked about specific herbs. I wanted to do that again, too. Okay. So I picked two herbs, and one is called eyebright, the first one. Mm -hmm. Eyebright is an herb with small white flowers that feature purple streaks and a splash of yellow near the center. Okay. It has been used in traditional herbal medicine in Europe for centuries, particularly for uh, eye ailments like redness and irritation, which yeah. I guess is why it's called eyebrow. eyebright. Yeah, its Greek name Euphrasia means gladness, referring to how it, the herb may feel as it restores your health. Mm-hmm. You use it for opening your third eye, okay, for for clarity and for seeing the truth. Mm-hmm. It commonly grows in Europe, Asia, and North America. It is semi parasitic, so I bet that my husband won't let me grow it in my backyard. Um, Its stems, leaves, and flowers are used in traditional herbal medicine, including as a tea or in dietary supplements. It has an antihistamine property. So, you know, when your eyes are red and itchy, that makes Mm -hmm. sense that it must have an an antihistamine uh, contingency to it. And it has been used to treat seasonal allergies or hay fever. <clears throat> it has very little odor, but is supposed to be bitter. Mm-hmm. So if you want to put it in a tea, take that into account. Um, Eyebright had the folklore reputation of being able to restore sight to people after their three score and 10, which is 70 years old. Okay. Eyebright was used by the Scottish Highlanders in a lotion mixed with milk and applied to the eye with a feather. That just makes me shiver. <laughs> seeing a feather going into the eyeball Ooh. um better than a needle oh you were right there mm-hmm. definitely and in iceland the expressed juice was used to treat a variety of eye complaints okay you, you can use eyebright in tea or tincture um where you want uh medicine to soothe your mouth or throat um it works best when it's direct in direct contact with the body and it combines perfectly <coughs> with chamomile and fennel for treating eye problems. Mm-hmm. So the second herb I chose was chamomile. Okay. Chamomile, we've all heard of chamomile tea. Yes, I grow yeah. chamomile. Yeah. Uh, do you? Yeah, it's in my Out on, on your little garden? Yep. Oh, that's neat. Chamomile is often ingested as a tea for calming purposes and to soothe di- digestive tract, which apparently you need right now. Probably. <laughs> And is mild enough to be administered to babies. It is derived from the Greek word kamai, which translates to on the ground. And the O'Neill part is supposed to be apple. So it's like apple on the ground is what it comes out to be. Um, It was used in ancient Egypt 
as an offering to the gods. Okay. It is a gentle sedative and its flowers contain antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and a- antibacterial properties. Um, in fact, in Egypt, they used it as a cure for malaria, oh, which wow. is bizarre. Yeah. <clears throat> Common preparations were teas, baths, sits baths, gargle. Oh, Jesus. Gargles. I read that as gargoyles. <laughs> uh, inhalations and compresses. I, I'm like, what do you do with a gargoyle? Gargoyle. Okay. Gargoyle chamomile. <laughs> gargoyle chamomile. Germans refer to this ju- uh, this herb as Alice Zutraut, which I am sure that uh, I'm not pronouncing that right. My mm-hmm. sister is taking German. She would probably laugh at me, uh, <sighs> but which means capable of anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Native Americans have used this um, and related species um, in the Americas, and they often use the entire plant, which doesn't surprise me. Um, the Native Americans were very good at not wasting anything and being very respectful of nature. Yeah. But the Aleut drank teas to alleviate gas and considered the plant a cure-all. And drinking the tea was a Cherokee trick for regularity. So okay. it helps you helps you poop. <laughs> the uh, Kootenai and the Cheyenne got creative, the former making jewelry and the latter making perfume out of the pulverized flowers. Mm -hmm. Chamomile has magical uh, implications for attracting money. And accordingly, there are gamblers who like to use it as a hand rinse when they need luck. Oh, isn't that funny? That is funny. Like, that's like... That's weird. I never. I know. I wonder if I should. I should make a chamomile soap and sell it or something. Oh, I would buy it. (laughs) (laughs) Are you a gambler? Uh, no. I just like chamomile. (laughs) (laughs) Cosmetically, chamomile has been used as a rinse for accentuating highlights or lightening blonde hair. Oh, then I would have needed that when I went through my blonde hair phase. Topically, this herb has an emollient effect and is softening and soothing to the skin, which emollient means to, it helps you take off the dead skin layer. Mm -hmm. It has also been used as a perfume and flavoring agent for liqueurs. Yay! I want to use chamomile for that. Uh, Such as Benedictine and vermouth. Now, I've had vermouth, but I don't think I've ever had Benedictine. I'm not quite sure what that is. Mm -hmm. According to an herbalist, Matthew Becker, the type of person who responds best to chamomile is one who complains often or fretful children and for adults who act like children. Oh, which my oldest child is um, was colicky when she was born. And so it would have been very nice to have had chamomile to try on her because we were about to kill her. But anyway, (laughs) Um, uh, some call it a weed, but mm-hmm. as you, Ren, so eloquently stated, an herb is an herb. An herb is an but herb. I, I guess sometimes a weed is an herb. And I found a quote from Doug Larson that says, a weed is a plant that has mastered every survival skill except for learning how to grow in rows. Isn't that great? I, I love like that. I like that, yeah. And then I was doing... As I was doing this research, I came across where I want us to take our next trip that we're going to drag our husbands to. Okay. Well, once COVID is completely erased because it's not in the United States. Oh, um, it's Slovenia, and I want to go. Okay, and they have monasteries there. There was this whole site about the herbs over in Slovenia and the things that you can go and see. They have monasteries where monks have explored the positive effects of medicinal plants for centuries. You can buy stuff there. Um, You can visit local herbalists. They have herb farms, herbal boutiques. Um, You know, I I just, I want to go. It looked amazing. That sounds amazing. (laughs) And then that made me think about how we were watching, um, Oh gosh, it's a brand new series on Netflix, The Kid with the Horns. Ah, I can't remember the name of it. Anybody who's watched it will know what I'm talking about. But there were these flowers that would pop up wherever the the sick uh, came about. And my husband, Mike, said that 
he heard that wherever there are poisonous plants that grow, there's usually a plant that treats it grow that grows right near that, Mm -hmm. which I thought was the coolest thing I had, I had ever heard. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So I wonder if that means like near nightshade, which is a poisonous plant, does Mm -hmm. the remedy for nightshade grow that, that I'll have to check that out because I find that to be interesting. Yeah. And then the last thing that I found was I found a site that talked about herbs with, how did they put it? It was an a English website and their, the way they put things is different than we do here in the United States. And so they were, they were talking about these dirty named herbs. Okay. <laughs> there is an herb called stiff cop which actually treats ED, erectile dis- dysfunction. It's an oh herbal treatment. Oh my gosh. I and mean, it's that's called stiff cock. Pretty clever. You don't have to <laughs> wonder what it does. <laughs> I know. And then there was one called sticky willy, which is funny because over in, in England, that willy is your dick and then nipple wart. And then there were some other ones that they thought were dirty, but it's not words that the United States use oh. or that but we but I thought that was funny yeah like you and I wouldn't understand it yeah yeah we wouldn't Uh, consider that a a dirty word yeah um (laughs) so next I found something that also in the book was really cool and I I I've seen it before never really read into it and I actually want to go back and reread into it and want to do an episode on it like alone hoodoo hoodoo So the art and practice of hoodoo, which is also known as conjure, conjugation, like conjuration, not conjugation. We're going to conjugate some verbs tonight. You (laughs) came here for a learning lesson. Hoodoo with conjugating verbs. (laughs) Conjugation. Holy cow. (laughs) And root work. Oh, my gosh. It is an African-American tradition of folk magic. The origin of the word hoodoo is a mystery. Hmm. So it is known to have been in use in the United States since the 19th century and or probably earlier. And it is believed to be African. Okay. Not to be confused with voodoo, which is a Haitian religion. Okay. Because that was what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Voodoo, Voodoo is what I've heard of. Yeah. Hoodoo is neither a religion nor a religious demonate like de- denomination. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Wow, you're, I, you're struggling. Conjugation, denomination, <laughs> <laughs> and so therefore it is not capitalized. Oh, so voodoo is capitalized because mm-hmm. it's a religion, but mm-hmm. hoodoo is not capitalized because it is not a religion. Yep. So hoodoo is a unique blend (laughs) of African religious beliefs. So it's a blend of them Uh and customs with Native American herb lore and European folk magic. So it's like a little bit of knowledge pulled from like a little bit of all over the place. Which, you know, probably makes it a very powerful magic. When you when you try to, you know, it's like when you make dogs and you you get so ingrained into you know interbreeding and that kind of thing that that problems it's it's you learn more and do better when you have outside influences come yeah. in i think i could see that mm-hmm. i could see that and this uh hoodoo can be practiced by anyone it is popular and is strongest throughout the southern regions of the united states hmm. um and like so, louisiana yeah I mean, I associate voodoo with Louisiana, but maybe, but maybe you're too. getting it confused. I might be. That's I true. don't know. I this is the only research I had done on hoodoo, and we'll I really want to do more. Yeah. yeah. So I picked three uh, herbs that go with hoodoo, and I I just love them. So angelica root is the first one, and it has the purposes of warding off evil, uncrossing or breaking jinxes, and attaining good luck. Oh, so, that's, I'm going to make a note of that one because okay. I am often jinxed and need good luck. <laughs> um, when anointed with three drops of peaceful. There's three again. Yep. 
peaceful home oil. And I think that the author talks more about peaceful home oil throughout the book mm-hmm. and carried in a blue mojo bag. And you re- you just talked about mojo bags. Yeah. So I thought that that was really cool. I, I That is so cool because we didn't plan it, yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a blue mojo bag with a pinch of lavender flowers and angelica root is said to bring peace and tranquility to one's home and protect their marriage against infidelity. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So the next one, you guys are going to have to go look this up, like what it looks like. It is so cool looking, but also like, I'm not going to say freaky, but like, weird okay okay my my connotation to weird is not bad it's just it is that's it is it that my her, weird her connotation is not bad. her connotation of weird is a picture of river in the dictionary she's not laughing what <laughs> <laughs> she's just looking at me like what the <laughs> hell are you talking about <laughs> my brain kind of like went dot 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 like what <laughs> Uh, move along okay (laughs) it is called devil pod it is shaped like a flying bat or devil horned goat it's like those are two very different things you have to look it up or look there's a picture of it in the book so you can go click on the link so cool. So in, in hoodoo, it is used to guard against evil for the okay. protection. They, uh, they are carried in mojo bags, not a specific color that I read or okay. positioned above doorways facing outward. And so these bags were found at entr- entrances to ancient Tibetan temples. Interesting. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. It's so cool. And then the next one that I picked was Devil's Shoestring, which is okay. used for playing lotteries. So kind of like chamomile. Maybe if you combine the two, you yeah, can be lucky. Yeah. Okay. And so they're also used in betting um, on games of chance. So if you carry it in a red flannel mojo bag, it draws luck and protects against evil. So my husband and I, one of our favorite date nights is to go out and play Keno. So you need to fill yourself up with some devil shoestring and some chamomile. I do. And carry it in a red flannel mojo bag. Yeah, but red flannel mojo bag. And so my question is, whenever you have, I don't want to say every time, but let's say you are at a casino and you're playing lot, like you're, you're playing games of chance, Mm -hmm. right? Are there evil things, energies or whatever ruining your luck so that's why you have to carry a mojo bag to protect against that evil like is that evil always there Uh playing around or like is it just a string of bad luck like that's my interesting i don't know while i was reading this i was like that's very interesting so in life do you just have evil energies following you and so that's why us witches try to protect ourselves because we know that there's other things. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we have like why we do these things to help protect against evil. Like interesting. That's my question. I hadn't thought about that. I don't know. Me neither. And so now I'm just gonna think whenever I go anywhere, there's like if I like trip, I'm gonna be like, yep, an evil force <laughs> tripped me. Not myself. When I go and, and when we play <laughs> Kino and we lose, we're going to say, yep, it's those evil, evil Kino forces against us. Evil Kino forces. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, how funny. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that's all that I have. Me too. So yeah, so, okay. Thank you so much for listening. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can find us on all social medias at C3 Witchy Podcast. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. And then you can also find us at our website, which is www.c3witchypodcast.com. There you will find our links to all of our social medias as well as our merch and Patreon. Yes, and yeah. please come support us. Yes, yes. We, we need it takes money and time to, to do this. So any support that you would give if you enjoy this, please yes. please support us. Yes, it would that be fun. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So thanks so much for listening. We'll see y'all next week. Not see, but you know what I mean. <laughs> We'll we'll talk at you next week. Yeah, you'll listen (laughs) next week. (laughs) All right. Thank you all. Thanks.